Hello everybody and welcome to the Virtual Open Wheel Series Round 1. We're here in Brands Hatch. Uh, I'm joined with the co-commentator today, uh, Martin. Uh, we're live, hello. Uh, having a couple of issues at the moment with the stream, but uh, we are going to... Oh, hello. But we are going to quali uh, shortly, uh, as soon as we can. As you can see, here's the. Here's the uh, but uh, first, I think we should probably run through some facts about Brands Hatch. So, Brands Hatch has held 12 British F1 GPs from 1964 to 1986. It was even used in Champ Car, which is now IndyCar, of course. Uh, a special IndyCar layout was used for their runnings in um, Champ Car. This race will be the first uh, first race in Val since season two to have a feature and a sprint race. That will be a reverse grid after the race. But unfortunately, only 20 drivers will be able to race today due to an issue with the track. So uh, the bottom two in qualifying will be knocked out. Uh, there are plenty of new teams to watch out for, specifically Velocity, who have shown really good pace in testing. Uh, and Max Reichel and his team, 8-6, will be looking to defend their crown as world champions this season. So... Who are you saying are favourites for the season? I've just realised I, I, I've just realised I didn't have you um, turned up. <laughs> um, so uh, could you just repeat that, please? Sorry. So who do you think are the favourites for this season? Well, from what I've seen so far, it's um, definitely the two eighty-six guys, Max Reichel, uh, le leading the team, of course. Um, I'm also um, looking forward to what Massimiliano Riboli can do. Actually, he was uh, for the short time I've seen, I've seen he was second in practice for right now, and could be interesting what he what he can do if he can attend everything. Yeah, I think for me, I'm uh, definitely looking forward to seeing uh, Massey, see what he can do. Of course, he's in our junior team car, so he's shown some really good pace in testing and of course in OFR. So hopefully he can uh, follow that through, I guess. So uh, I do believe this is qualifying now. So at the moment we're riding on board with Peter Jones. Oh, 
I love this camera shot. It really gives you the sense of speed. Through here. Okay, let's see who else we can ride on board with. So here is Victor Marknack. He is the... Oh, uh, Marton's game crash, so it's me for the moment. So uh, he is driving from Asmuda Motorsport, which is the... Oh, someone's gone off there. Let's have a look at that. Uh, he's driving from Asmuda Motorsport, which is, of course, the junior team to reading game. Uh, he showed some decent pace in testing. I think it was 12th and 11th he finished, but kind of through no fault of his own. I'm just going to... I, If you don't mind me, I'm just going to... Can't sort that out. Hang on. There we go. So, yeah. So, watching him through here. And there is... Baguette has gone off. Uh, we'll have a check out of that. A lot of people just go off to finish their laps. But uh, as you can see, here's the timing. Max Weichel, of course, is in P1 at the moment on provisional pole position. He is do he's done a 109.908. Um so yeah, I'm just gonna let you ride on board with we'll find someone. So right on board with Season 2 World Champion Dimitri for, hopefully, his flying lap. Yeah, I spent still long in the game, so I can't touch. So you can see, Dimitri just had um, a little incident there, uh, going. It goes to P8 right now. Yeah, it was a kind of bad lap. He got caught up in some traffic and was forced onto the grass. But hopefully, he can. It looks like he's gone for another flying lap gone a bit wide there of course Dimitri is very good on the keyboard uh, which is a very unusual choice of controller for a game like Half Factor but uh, it was enough to win him a world championship uh, and he does very well constantly getting podiums and stuff for Iris championship I won which was Formula Pacific he he was one of the main challengers I had and what seeing how I'm on a wheel and he's on a keyboard and then being able to to, to just be, be, be challenging me even though that doesn't really say much it's, that's still very impressive and Dimitri comes to in P2 and uh, Dimitri is actually 0 0.02 sec 0.002 seconds off of Max Weichel for pole here. Uh, we're going to see if he does go for another flying lap, which it looks like he might be doing. Right, he has time enough to, to do it, so. Still nine minutes to go. Still plenty of time. We'll just do a quick check up of the full order here in the game. So, uh, running in P1 is Max Reitschel, uh and of course, riding on board right now is Dimitri. Uh, here's the rest of the lineup for you. 
we'll uh, choose someone else apart from Dimitri. Let's uh... Peter Jones. Let's fight on board with Peter Jones. Now, uh, what do you think about Peter Jones and his? Uh... What do you think his chances are this year? Possibly an outsider for the championship. Uh, I think he was in the lower stages of, or in the later stages of last year. Is he in the 8 6? Um, I'll double check. I haven't really checked up on the liveries this year. Uh, oh, yeah, Velocity have shown, shown some really good pace in testing. Um, it's well worth keeping an eye out for Velocity this season. Uh, I definitely think. Yeah, the Velocity team looks really strong with, with also Idai's Batar, Batar's uh, also there. He's also uh, one of the guys that's always relatively solidly beat me. Um, but he took, he took a little break last year for, uh, as far as I've noticed. I'm glad to see him back. He has very good potential. And with Peter Jones and one team, that could be a, a outsider for the team championship, actually. Because when you look at it, uh, the teammate of Dimitris isn't here. And the and then the guy in fifth, Jacob is, uh has a teammate in Amir Hammond. But he is a little bit down on pace compared to the other one. Jacob being in fifth and Ammer being in tenth. Oh, I, I do remember being in practice Knowing for... Knowing Ammer, he will probably do some magic to get, get up in the points. I remember while we were in practice for Silverstone, I was on team radio with my guys. Uh, I remember we had an issue. Well, not an issue, sorry. It was just like Peter Jones, like two seconds up on everyone else in practice. Justin Meister going to 5th with a 10.1 and Ida is beating that almost immediately after so we have 86 on 2nd and 6 and I want to draw your attention to Jacob Kabloaski uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not very good with your opinion names, I do apologise he's just gone fastest with a 109.7 and I was talking to my drivers in practice and they were saying that that is impossible to get Yeah, they said that the 109s were really hard. Meanwhile, Max Reichel already beat it. Uh, one point, uh, one point, one dot. And one minute, nine point four, which is already two, almost three tenths faster. So we're going to follow the lap of Anthony Nickpon. Uh, what did you think about his chances this year? Um, or this season, sorry. Um, I think he's going to... Whoa. That's unfortunate for... Uh, that was quite a bit crash, to be fair. Um, I think he's going to be a... He's probably going to struggle to get a lot of points. I don't see him in the top five anytime soon, but yeah, he's always free to prove me wrong. I love when people prove me wrong. It's my favorite pastime. Oh, that's a 
that's not what you want to happen on a qualifying lap. No, I, I, I've been watching the Gabriel Lafrenet guy in practice, and he seems to be able to say, oh, massively wide there into the gravel and into the wall for Anthony. But uh, no, I've been watching um, Gabriel uh, Lafrenet. Again, I, I'm awful with names in this series. Uh, and he seems to not necessarily have all of the pace in the world, but he seems to be definitely very clean and just able to set some decent lap times from what I've seen. Yeah, I, did, I did some little practice myself and I saw him practicing and he was just a mile faster than me. Yeah, I, I definitely think he's someone who maybe could be a wild card for the championship. I can't really see it, but I can definitely see like more of a, a top 10 finish, definitely for him, judging by his pre-season pace and pace during the week. Meanwhile, as a surprise, Calvin Reinhardt goes to P8 in the Evictus, Ozone Evictus. That's not what I was expecting at all. I always knew that Calvin is a decent driver, but to bring out this pace, it's, that's, uh, I'm not, not hugely shocked, but I'm definitely surprised. Yeah, I also would like to bring the attention to Ryan Masmuda and Anthony are both P21 and P22, which means, of course, they will be the ones who are crashing out of qualifying if it does stay like this, um, which would be a huge shame um, on my part. Uh, and obviously for Anthony's team as well. Well, the thing Anthony has, he has two teams and he's not driving for either of them, so not, that's not really a, 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 that's a that bit of a big of shame for his team. But Aaron Kurt is currently on the bubble for, for uh, 20th right now, only half a second faster than Masmundo. Uh, there's been a big crash at turn two with Calvin Reinert. Um But no, I was just looking through the timing screen and um, it turns out that Victor, um, our junior team driver, is actually beating out um, is actually beating out Massey, which is a huge upset at the moment. Not sure what's happened to Massey on his lap. I know he was one, one of the fastest from what we've seen uh, in our team's chat uh, throughout the throughout the week. I think he is having, uh, he's tr definitely having trouble with traffic right now with uh, Nick Braun being in the way. I don't think this will be an improvement on his current lap. Peter Jones goes to pole, original pole, with 400 of a second faster. Wow. Uh, definitely an outsider chance for the uh, championship. I... I I definitely would say I have quite a bit of confidence in the Velocity guys this season. I think they can definitely, if they crack down and they've got a good enough driver lineup to definitely push for maybe top three or even the team's championship if they really push on. Going down to the last seconds, who can do it? Who can do another lap and who, who can make it to, to the race actually? And no, it's not going to be Nick from. He's out. He's in the pit lane. I'm just going to ride on board with Ryan Masmuda for this lap. Uh, definitely not sweating at all. But uh, he is awesome in the drop zone. He needs to gain 1.3 seconds on his lap to stay in the in for the race. I like that. I like that. Not really breaking, but downshifting. Oh no! That's unfortunate. That bump there in the turn is so so brutal. It's 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 so easy for someone to do that as well, especially when you've got like a single screen. You're not really paying attention. You're just on your out lap. It's so easy to just get hit like that, and unfortunately, that's cost Ryan his qualifying and our team some points that would have been very useful for the team's championship. And so, that is qualifying over.
um, as it is. So here is your lineup. Peter Jones takes a shock pole for Velocity Motorsport. 8-6 uh, follow with Max Whiteshaw. Then Dimitri, uh, Jacob Carola, uh, him, uh, Justin Meister, Edis Batars, uh, Victor Markinick with a very, very good P7 from Asmuda Motorsports there. Uh, Alan Kopik is next, at, followed by Carl van Reinhardt, Gabriel Lafrenet, uh, Massimilo Ribioli, Amma Hammond, Joe Gillett, Maxime Krauset, uh, Juris Bilkins, Will Metcalf, Creox Baguette, Marks Zervos, Aaron Curtis, and Tobias Kress. I'm quite shocked myself that um, Anthony and Ryan are the two drivers to go out. What, what's your take on it? Um, I'm, I shortly saw Sid Kumar on B21. I don't know what happened to him. I don't know where he came from, actually. I didn't see him at all before, but I'm, he's not in the channel, so, right now, uh, so I think he just uh, left. So uh, we are going to go to a quick break uh, during the warm-up and we will be back to you for the start of race one in the first round of the Vows, uh, the Virtual Open Wheel Series round one, the British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch. Can you increase?
You join us just as warm-up is closing here in Brands Hatch for the virtual open wheel series British Grand Prix for season four now. Uh, there, following will be a feature race and then the sprint race. Sprint race featuring a reverse grid, but first, uh, let's talk to Martin. Martin. I'm really bad with these names. Um, for the for a quick talk i suppose about that qualifying because that was a fairly insane qualifying uh, wouldn't you agree that it was a fairly insane qualifying martin i mean the top five was less than uh, less than a tenth apart let me just back check that really quick it's fine i accidentally muted you so <laughs> only the last couple of sentences were in there so uh no but yeah i'd agree that uh the top five were really close uh there it's surprisingly close and i was not expecting peter jones to go and get pole uh, it'll be interesting to see how he copes with the pressure of being um of being on pole heading into turn one at brands hatch um I think he'll be fine actually because turn one i don't remember the grid how the grid lines up if p1 is on the inside or the outside but i think seeing how the run through turn one actually is it's he should if he gets a decent start he should be able to have, have the lead especially if he's on the outside i think yeah i i just really hope no one really just sticks it down the inside for a dive bomb uh, because that that would no, well, I mean, it would make for entertainment for us, but it's enough to make a team manager literally cry um, at his screen. Yeah, I've I've been part of the uh, the getting dive bombed oftentimes in turn one. Meanwhile, Aaron Curtis literally rolls across the pit straight with uh, two wheels uh, in the air. Further showing that curbs are very deadly. Oh, that's the the uh, the race is starting, <laughs> and I've just uh, had an absolute horrible. Uh, so I'm going to put the camera on Peter Jones, and then we'll uh, go from there. His game crashed though, so and Calvin's did, and Alan did. Uh, if my game does crash, you'll see just the stream will start shortly thing. Um, so yeah, we, we won't restart the warm-up. It won't be a full warm-up, I imagine, this one. It will just be until we can get those guys back in. So, so yeah, we, we uh, won't restart I've just the I've put the stream back on. Uh, eight people watching the stream. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, but yeah, uh, the drivers can have a bit of extra time to warm up. Uh, but... I know when warm-up restarts, for me, I know that kind of, that just kind of really ruins you, because you're like, we're ready to race, we're on the grid, and then it's restart, it just, you kind of come out of the zone a second, um, and, you know, uh, I, was, I was wondering if anyone else thought that. Well, definitely, if you're on a tight schedule, then it's, then it's very frustrating. Because I know definitely you have to uh, you have to really mentally prepare yourself for turn one um in many ways and you just have to like you have your plan you're like i'm gonna piss on this lap i'm gonna be easy into turn one i mean for me it's it's easier because i'm usually at the back but it's like i'm gonna be quite easy to turn one and then see where it goes from there but if you have these extra minutes waiting it's a bit more like well you know you're do i have time to go to the toilet or like you know because they're not because they don't wait for you oh and they we've started again okay i, I strongly dislike our facts to leave the grid man Interestingly, Peter Jones isn't actually... Oh, he is. He's there. Right, let's do this then. Of... 
of course we'll have a formation lap first for where the drivers can have a chance to warm up their tyres then we'll just follow peter jones on the formation lap this is quite nice chilled you kind of you're able to get your you, you know you're able to feel, re, really get more of a feel for the car and when it's under like i suppose when it's under race fuel and things you can just kind of be like okay i can examine the guy in front of me and then we can we can go from there and that's definitely what i found when we raced um that it, it it's very much everything settles down in the formation lap and then you're like right we can race now it's also a good opportunity to warm the tires and the, and the brakes as brakes especially because um i see a lot of people always warming up the tires by weaving from one side to side but I mean, obviously, seeing seeing uh, brake uh, brake warming is happens a lot less. It's a lot less visual, but I don't really see it happening that much. And I think it's especially for a turn one like this, it's even more important to warm the brakes rather than the tires. Oh yeah, you don't want to jump down the inside and have a huge lockup because your brakes are freezing cold and then like cause three car pile up because you you will get. It's that kind of thing that causes a, a season ban for people. I mean, uh, I know it wasn't exactly, but we know that season bans are ha handed out. Like if we saw Giori at um, Imola last season, he was he was handed a season ban for granted dangerous and stupid driving, but they are handed out, and they're not they aren't sort of afraid to hand these these bans out. Right, so the grid is reforming. We'll be going to five red lights very soon. We're going to ride right on board. Here we go. And it's lights out and away we go. It seems to be a very clean start for everyone. We have to look at the back of the field though. Everyone seems to be okay into turn one, Peter. Reinhardt manages to catch a sliding car, which is a, which is impressive in turn one. Still going on with Peter Jones. There seems to be a slight battle with Max Reichel. He seems to have a slight look down into turn one there, but wasn't able to get anything. Uh, but everyone seems to be away quite clean. Max trying to trying to sort of see where he can make a move, but he does need to look back as well. Maybe he can make that move into into here, going around the outside, but. Oh, and there's a spin. There's a spin a bit further back for Justin Meister. Meister. He goes Meister right with, back. With a scary spin and coming onto the track. Oh, and so oh, and there's a huge crash. There's a big crash. We'll get. We'll see if we we can't get a replay on that. Unfortunately. Metcalf is involved. Amra Hammond is involved. I think Juris is also involved. I am looking at my map right now, and it does appear that everyone seems to have got away fairly all right from that crash even though it did look back it did look Except, quite bad uh, who's in the pit line for, for a new nose because he lost the front wing you do not want to be losing your front wing uh in the early stages of the race but then again maybe now he chooses the harder compound attire and maybe he goes for the end he goes to the end of the race now it's getting very feisty into turn one slash i think that's turn two actually um with the two um are they the i am really i should know what this team is but uh yeah with the two teammates the goma i think that is the goma team those two teammates got a bit their elbows out there and you do not want to be uh getting your teammate <laughs> yeah, contact with your teammates is always the one thing you have to avoid and it's and they qualified pretty far from each other, but Le, 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 Le Frane, I oh, And that's Peter Jones! Peter Jones has lost the lead! With a spin there! Wonder, we, want, we wonder what happened there. I think it's the famous bump. Mark Severus also spins on the exact same spot. I'm really sorry, the cameras are very hard to manage here, but we can see what we can't see what happened with Peter Jones. It'll be interesting to see after the race what happened. Maybe get him in for an interview back to Rachel. He'll be thinking, right, it's my lucky day. And Victor! Oh my god, that is some big damage from Victor uh, Markinak there. 
with such a good qualifying. That'll be heartbreak for the rear wing damaged. And he goes around again. Yeah, rear wing damage is really dangerous because you have no front, uh, rear end downforces. Every time you want to car, uh, turn the car, it just spins on you. He spins again. It's going to be very difficult for him now to make anything of this race. But maybe he'll be thinking, okay, maybe I, maybe I can sort of hold back last so I can get that pole position for the second race. Maybe that's maybe that's what he's going to be thinking now in that Masmuda Motorsport car. I think it's the only chance you have because driving with a without a rear wing is so dangerous. And he, you can see it's very controlled on the on the throttle and even Joris Bilkins ran it wide there uh, into the gravel. That's uh, that's not something you want to be doing. It's been a very action-packed opening few laps to the race here, and you wonder <laughs> who's going to come out on top. It, it's 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 a very mainly incidents it shows how dangerous brands hatch is and victor is we want to see what's going on here has just basically sat upside down no rear wing it's basically race over all he has to, what he what he needs to do now is definitely see if he can just try to crawl it to the line at the end of the race but there's still a long way to go This drama has has allowed Reichel to get a decent a three second gap to Edais and Riboli actually and in, in the top three. So that's really got shaken up. And we can see Dimitris actually in P4 with a smoking engine. That could be trouble down the line, actually. Uh, I've seen this on a couple guys actually that are running with a smoking engine. For uh Corset, for ex for example, also has it. Zerbos also has it, so that I don't. That's good. That could be fatal near the end. After four laps, already a, a engine that's that's smoking. That's that's normal Honda power, uh, powered by dreams. Yeah, as you said, you really want to be easy on the gearbox because in our factor, I've known many, plenty of times in practice that the um, that your that your gearbox can go so easily on a downshift and especially these cars not necessarily the gearbox but the back end steps out so easily if you if you downshift a bit too early or you know if you downshift to second i know in hockenheim around the long winding curbs um where vatel binned it in real life um when you second gear there is deadly in these cars of course the uh, formula renault 2.0s Uh, I want to draw your attention to uh, Massey uh, Ribioli. Of course, he's had that very big upset in OFR uh, last weekend. Uh, a massive dispute over a penalty. And uh, he's come to Vows this weekend. And he's running in P3 in the junior team car, which is... Which is just shows how good of a driver he actually is. He's not his. I've, oops, wrong car. I don't think he's gonna struggle to claw back to the uh, Bartars though for, for P2. He also has to look out for Dimitris uh, that's behind him. And we do know that if anyone is gonna overtake you in this series, it is definitely Dimitris. Um, he is. He is very good with his race craft his quality pace is good and his race pace is very good he's got i think it was seven years of experience he was telling me on the keyboard and if you've been racing for seven years on the keyboard you must know what you're doing uh, with that controller meanwhile unexpectedly after the spin meister is also already back to p5 the he spawned right in, in lap one. On the Yeah, he wasn't involved basically people had to dodge him. 
this just shows how good of a driver lineup 86 have got. And even already, that's, that's, I'm honestly shocked by that, that he's already back up to P5. Now, Massey is possibly about to come up to Victor, uh, Victor Markinak in the Mazmuda, in his team. Hey, so, whoa. Batars. Batars goes off and he's got front wing damage now. He's going right into the pits. We'll have a look to see that. And Zervos has got rear wing damage, a lost rear wing. We're gonna quickly go into into this yeah, and look. I, I saw it happening, I think, with Zervos being really slow on the straight and people not being able to avoid him. Dimitris has gone into the pits. Luckily, he's repaired up. But that is a gift for Massey. And if you are Massey, you are going to be rubbing your hands together right now and thinking, this is a gift. P2. And I know that that will be our sort of team's highest finish ever, in a, apart from half of pre-season earlier this will be the highest anyone's done in a reading game car whether that be junior or not but that would be a very good result if he can hold on to this for and hold off the pressure from his mood of motorsports there well Meister's already uh, well not really catching up to him I think he's, he, he, ha he is lapping faster pretty sure so he that this might just end up being a 1-2 for 86. And meanwhile, I've just seen Max Krauset, of course, the owner he's of this league. Okay, so he's just been lapped by... Uh, I've seen Maxime Krauset Max. in the gravel with, on pit exit, which is, shows really how tough this track is. Oh, and there's a spin for Calvin. Why Calvin not? He is off. in. He's, he's, off. he's off the track. He's actually out of bounds. You don't see this. He's, he's back on track. <laughs> just jumps the fence again. <laughs> They're supposed to keep cars out and he just jumps it twice. And the thing with these cars is you know full well he hasn't it's got any damage. And there's Joe Giller also, his teammate, has gone off. That has been a really bad sequence of corners for Ozone in Victor's Motorsport there. And Dimitri goes to pass him. We're all clean there. And uh, I, I was just going to make the point that uh, Max Krauset in P18, not sure how that's happened, but that's just adding to the woes of this race for reading game. Um, and Meister already up to the tail of Riboli with, within a second. And Riboli goes into the pit lane. Yep, he'll be making, I know in team chat, I think we were talking about possibly an undercut. It worked for us in Silverstone to get an extra place for Ryan. And... Uh, so the idea is you run lighter and then you pit quite early so that when you come back on track, you're in that clean air and you can just set lap after lap of fast laps and hopefully you can get the jump on your opponents. Of course, because of the incidents we've had in this race, that undercut might not be working. Um, and I'm not sure if he has gone for the undercut. Uh, I haven't checked the team chat for since warm-up. Um, but I know it is, it is definitely something that really works for our team. Uh, last weekend. Uh, he doesn't have really clean air with Gillard being right in front of him. Uh, but if he gets past Gillard, he has a fairly clean air. And Justin Meister was off of track for a second there. Possibly losing out to the person behind him. Which is, uh, which is not good for 8-6. Right, sure. Oh, slight bit of oversteer and he was on two wheels there, but he's managed to hold it. Going round turn one, into turn, down the hill there. He'll be hoping that he can just keep going on as we are in lap 10 now. We are, sorry for any swearing that's in the chat. Uh, we have to look at the lap counter somehow. Meanwhile, Peter Jones is... Uh, is up to P11. He's not making that much progress compared to how Justin got back to the lead. He has made the pit stop though. He's required pit stop. Well, those uh, the 86 guys still have to. Meanwhile, we've got a very nice battle here. 
between Tobias Kress and Max Krauset. Uh, they were wheel to wheel for a second there. Very, very clean to not make contact. I mean, I think they did make a little bit of contact, and then Max gets a jump there. He like jumps off of the off of the thing. He's running P17 now. That was a very, very, very nice move from him. Yeah, these two are fairly, uh, fairly rivals with each other. They can, they basically always uh, somehow. They almost always end up together because the amount of times I've seen Press and Crusade racing against each other is just enormous. I don't know. I think they both really like it. Having someone to battle almost all race is um, generally a good thing. But again, I do imagine that Max will be quite disappointed with... Um with where he is right now especially after a fairly decent qualifying i think from him uh, in the point so he must have been tangled in all of that first lap mayhem earlier uh hopefully he can and there's a car going very slowly by the looks of it actually in gonna have to have a look at this apparently it was just my map lying to me there but uh jacob seeing if he can maybe overtake Joe Gillett here we'll just follow these two because this looks like it could be a very nice battle uh, I hate to interrupt you but this is going to be important with Meister in the pit lane is he gonna is the undercut gonna work for Riboli we will see where is Riboli we will, I'm looking at the mini-map right now. And he seems to be coming round now. I don't think it's going to work for him. He's coming down the pit straight right now. It's going to be close though. And can he do it? No, he comes out just behind Meister there. But he'll be happy being in... That's P4 actually. I wonder what's happened there. Uh, Dimitris undercut. Because he pitted almost immediately for damage, I think, and now he's, he's still running after that. That's a very, very good undercut from Dimitri there. If he has indeed gone for that long, long stint, though he will be having to manage his tyres later on in this race. Um, hoping not to make a mistake, and I know when you are on the keyboard, uh, it's very hard to sort of manage your tyres from what I know. Um, but obviously, he's the one with the experience, so we'll see if that pays off for him later in the race. Reichel in the pit lane and he's gonna I think he's gonna no I think Dimitris is gonna take the lead. Riding on board with Dimitris and he's just been Yeah. Although he you would fancy his chances to chip away at that lead in the remaining laps here because uh there are actually like still nine laps to go and Dimitri is very good at chipping away gaps. Now, Dimitri's pressure is not something I would wish upon someone. We can see there, this might be an overtake for the lead. He's a bit far back, but Rachel has been make, has made a mistake. And there, can Dimitri have a look down the inside into there? But no, he doesn't make it a bit too far back. Loses some time out to Rachel there, which is... Which, well, Dimitri will kind of be kicking himself that he just didn't just, like, stay behind him and try and take him around the moor straights but um i imagine dirty air would also be quite powerful around this track and you don't want to be in dirty air going into corners especially in this in these cars yeah from my experience there were dirt, there are understeer heavy as already so adding more on steer just that's not it also we're sad, sad to report that uh that we have our first uh, second retirement actually with coppage just Miss losing it on the run to turn two and just destroying his the, the car. We hope he's okay. I mean, he'll probably will be, but I mean, you, you do very, very difficult to hurt yourself in your sim rig. But you know, these force feedback wheels do have a mind of their own, unless, of course, you are this man, Dimitri, 
Uh, Backmarker traffic with Max Krausek could get involved in this battle here. Maybe if Reichel get stays in this dirty air for a bit too long, maybe it might force him into a force him into a mistake, and Dimitri can gain some time. But uh, he seems to get away cleanly there. Uh, Max showing his racecraft. That is why we signed him. So if you're Dimitri now, what's your what's your action plan for the rest of this race? Uh, try to put him on under pressure, forcing him into, forcing him into a mistake. I don't see anyone other way. But I think Rifle is so cool and uh, and calm. He just he won't make that mistake actually. Yeah. So, I think probably consolidating that he's in P2 will, um, will do it. Meanwhile, by the looks of things, it is going to be the Masmuda Motorsport driver of Victor Markiniak. If it carries on like this, who will be on pole for that sprint race. And of course, there aren't as many points for the sprint race. But a win's a win, even if it is in the sprint race. And... You, you would celebrate that win as much as you can. And I wonder, maybe, if, because he'll be on pole, and Max Krauset, of course, in the senior team to his um, to his car, maybe there could be a bit of a tussle between those two. Um, seeing if they can... Seeing if they can prove themselves <laughs> against each other, I suppose. Oh, Peter Jones and Jacob Kobrachik are in, in a battle with Amar Hamid also for position fairly close to each other. With Jones now taking the, um, the spot from Jacob. Yeah, we're going to ride on board for a second here with Peter Jones. Uh, maybe Jacob behind him. Because uh, Peter Jones does seem to be in this sandwich of these two. I'm going to have to... I think they're the Krauset cars. I... I think they are. Might have to just Copic. no the Copic Motorsport, yeah. So uh, he's in a bit of a sandwich there now. Maybe if you're their team principal, maybe you're saying, okay, let's use how ha let's use ha Halmond to use him as a block so that Jacob can get past Peter Jones, and then the more I, I don't think this is a battle for points, but actually I think it might be. P7, if P7 does get points, and then we shot. Yeah, P this battle for P7, maybe they're that more, they're those more points, and that can really help you at the Circuit of Wales next weekend. Not next weekend, <laughs> at the end of the season. It's been a, uh, it's been a long day. Well, the strategy would work if uh, Kobolchik was able to close to uh, Hammond, which is not happening. He uh, Hammond is just driving away. You can, of course, see the order running. Uh, at the top of your screens now, we are Max Reichel, Dimitri, Justin Meister, and of course, Massimil Massimiliano Riboli. I am really sorry about my pronunciation of these names. But, um, yeah, I'd say that Max is now really pulling a gap to Dimitri. Dimitri seems to have just lost all of the pace. His tyres, if he has gone for that longer stint, which, looking at this point of the race, he seems to have done. He seems to be really dropping back now from Rachel. And uh, Rachel's handled that pressure from Dimitri very, very well, you have to say.
And with the pace, with the pace of dropping, my star might actually be uh, start going to start looking towards the Mitris. That would be a honestly kind of surprising one too from eighty six, seeing how my star was almost last as after the first lap. A podium for Meister and potentially a one-two. Uh, Massimilo Ribia Massey does actually come into the pits here. Now that's interesting. I wonder what he's. I wonder why he's done that. Is he retiring? It doesn't look so. Is he got? Maybe he's got damage, but that sees him in P5. He's going to be kicking himself if that is a strategy error. Maybe he's run out of fuel there, but he just sees the cars flying past him. Peter Jones now. He comes out in P7. Now that will be incredibly disappointing from his point of view. He'll feel like he's definitely thrown that away. But we do turn our eyes forward and Meister is starting to see the purple of Dimitri's Team Iris racing car there. You do wonder... With not many laps to go, we are actually going on to the final lap now. You wonder, can Meister pressure Dimitri into a mistake? I'd have to say, probably not. But you never know when you've got 8-6. Because they are just a class above. Um, it's actually two laps to go. Maybe even three with this, how this game handles, so... Uh, I think R Factor does it so it's laps completed. So. And Meister just goes on the inside. Oh, he's done it! <laughs> that is brilliant. Great it move. How many laps are, Maz Mazumda. Oh, have I been? Oh, okay. Uh, now I do apologise to Ryan here, but uh, I have been pronouncing um, his name completely wrong. For the uh, for the last few months now, uh, I, I I do apologise. It's Mazumda, which is going to take a lot to get used to, but uh, I do apologise for that. And more heartbreak for Peter Jones going wide and losing more positions to Riboli again. Actually, who's now up to P six? You wonder, heading into the last couple of laps, can Riboli sort of? See how many positions he can gain. I imagine he'd probably be thinking... Uh, now, I'm looking... P5 doesn't look like, like likely for him. But you never know. If P5 does make a mistake, he could be right in there to take that and potentially get P5. Which wouldn't be a bad result, considering everything that's happened throughout this race. I think this is really the point in the race that we were talking about earlier where Dimitri's tyres have started to go. Now, I doubt this, but uh, Batars in the... No, it's it's like a 20 second gap and Max Reichel flips it, but that doesn't matter because he has come home for the Vowles British Grand Prix sprint race in P1, followed by Meister in P2, uh, Dimitri in P3 now confirmed. And here we actually have a battle here for Hammond in P in P four coming about. Is that P four? Like I can't exactly see. Four and Batters has just lost lost, lost to Dimitri, who's in P five. So he comes around the final corner now to take P four, and it's going to be Dimitri. It's going to be Massey in P five, and then of course bitterly disappointed will be Batars losing out. On, on that P five. Yeah, the, that in the last sector losing two positions is never fun. But most importantly, on pole for the next race is Tobias Cress. Wow, what a race we've just had, and that's not even the end of the fun.
Wow. <laughs> so, I think we are going to go to a quick break. Um, go get a drink. We'll be back to discuss that race and, of course, bring you the sprint race. So, we will be back in literally three minutes. There's almost radio silence in the pit lane here as we await race two, the sprint race here at the virtual open wheel series. 
British Grand Prix at Brands Hatch. Um, today is the 14th of September. And yeah, uh, so me and Martin are just going to be discussing what happened in that crazy first race. A true credit to well sim racing as a whole uh so what what was your take on it first uh just overall it was quite chaotic actually i'm not as i wasn't really expecting that much uh that much chaotic uh, chaos from it with all the cars spinning off everywhere um that huge crash with uh meister i think it was that just triggered another one and then I know that the the thing you want to see least when you on your screen just coming closer to you when you're going into turn three is just cars sideways. I know in OFR last week that was my view into turn one. Uh, and actually, some info on Massey. Uh, he said in our team chat that it didn't refuel. It was a bug that caused him to have to make that second pit stop and cost him potentially a podium looking at the pace of Dimitri in the end which is which is quite sad from his half we know he will feel that he's definitely thrown away a podium there but it's still good points um for him and I, I reckon he'll be definitely happy with that Verboli also said in the paddock just now that um the refueling rig didn't work on his first stop, so he had to continue with a. He had to repit because he didn't ha didn't have enough fuel to make it to the end. Which is why that explains the second unnecessary stop, which ultimately didn't hurt him as much. He, sh he should have been P7, but problems for Idais and and Peter Jones upped him to P5. So. Of course with Massey. I know, speaking to him, I know he probably doesn't care as much. But I know full well with with Ryan, his his team boss, but also Max's reading game teammate. I know Massey will be kind of thinking, maybe, just maybe in a few races time, he could be in that seat, or even next season. Now, I know that it wouldn't be our intention to change the seats but you if you were in that situation as a driver you, you'd probably be thinking maybe i can be in that other car it, next season and i think that's definitely uh what he wants to do i think he wants to go to more of the gp vwc side of things from speaking to him um, and I think races like today where he's had that setback, I think still finishing in a good P5 is definitely something that really shows your class and your ability to maybe push on and get into those series. There also seems to be a fight going on in the... Uh, well, fight... Um, a altercation between uh, Kobraciek and and Max Reichel actually for abusing team radios. They're just writing in the chat uh, in the t chat constantly, which, well, yep, just... we are going to not look at that chat in the stream. Um... No, 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 no. <laughs> that was a mistake. We're not making again. We do apologise for any bad language that's in the chat. It's uh. Tensions do run high when you're in a race like in Vows. It's um, definitely, um, you know, we definitely do have arguments, but it's all part of the fun of it. Don't you agree? Uh, it depends. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of arguments. But I generally only start them when I'm, when I just hear something so wrong that I just can't resist so who are you going to be looking at heading into race two now because obviously you've got the the mas the mazumda on um 
on pole. Um, maybe you'll be thinking, maybe maybe Victor will be thinking, I can prove myself. I've got a team, and I'm going to show Ryan that I can, I can go in, I can be in the car next season. I know it's quite early to think, um, to think about next season, but he'll be thinking. I need to, if I want to stay in this car for next season, then I need to be, get, oh, we're going into the race now. Uh, is that another warm-up or has it gone into yeah. the race? We'll keep you updated on what's going on here, but uh seems to be nothing much as the car's all radio silent in the pit, la pit lane here. Well, well, not radio silent in the chat, but we're not going to look at that. <laughs> we're not going to look at that. No, so so maybe Victor, from his view, will be thinking, okay, I can, st I can probably find another seat for next season. Maybe one of the new, maybe one of the newer teams. Okay, well I've been cut short as we are going into the sprint race, obviously with the Mazumda on pole. And probably heating up for an interesting battle is the Reading Game car, the senior team of Max Krauset, who will be in P4. So, uh, actually, I have just, I've messed up. No, uh, I think the retirements also count as on pole, uh, also count for it. No, they've messed up the grid. I don't know what's going on now, uh, without looking at chat. So, uh, I'm going to go to the stream will start shortly thing, uh, just so we can have a look at what's going on in chat um, uh, without getting all the swear words on YouTube and getting demonetised. I can't get paid for this? It sounds right, so I'm saying it. So, we seem to have found out what the drama is about. So, the reverse grid seems to be having a few issues with the reverse grid here. Uh, just setting up the grid order with the R factor commands and stuff. Uh, it can be very confusing, uh, especially if. Ah! That's going to get me every time. <laughs> so, we, we. Just put in my earphones. Could be. I had once had a NASCAR mod that just made it awful. It just like it, it would almost always had a thirty second intro. The thing is, you, you you've got to love R Factor. All us non essential personnel, please leave the grid now, guy. He is a legend of the sim racing world, and I've just remembered that we need to put the stream back on so we can go racing for one final time at Brands Hatch. Formation lap has started, despite the fact that. There doesn't seem to be that many cars on the grid, either that or they're just all... No, everyone's here! All of, all of the, the crew. Um, someone to watch out for, I think, will be actually Kobrachi in P7. He's generally very, very quick if he can stay out of trouble, which he somehow always manages to find himself in. Could easily take this action. He has a decent gap to basically the rest of the guys that have decent pace. Looking at the grid here, I definitely think the dark horse of this could be that could be that Goma car of Creox Baguette uh, 
Now, if there is a coming together of the front three, I definitely think that he could be rubbing his hands together. I use that analogy way too much, but he could be... He could be kind of thinking, okay, I'll just I'll just mop up all of the... I'll, 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 I'll do all the cleaning and just... You know... But Tobias, I think, will definitely be looking forward and just thinking, if I can be clean into turn one, I'll probably be okay. And he'll just take it from there, I imagine. Yeah, getting a good launch is going to be fair. Super important. Because, <clears throat> of course, I suppose he does have the... <laughs> He's missed his grid slot there. But, of course, he does have the inside line into turn one. But maybe Victor would fancy his chances on the outside may be getting into P1. But we'll see. Waiting for the lights to come on. And we are green for the sprint race. So, everyone seems to be awake. It's a, it's a very good start. Everyone comes away clean. Max, Krauser and Joris Bilkins there had a little tussle. They seem to be... In the back with Giannopoulos going to the rear of the field. Didn't see what happened there. I think he got spun by someone. No, we're, we're what, at the moment we're watching the battle and Max and Victor. Victor's gone for the move down the inside and is up into P1. Tobias will be looking to get him back but he has to look backwards because Max Krauser is there and looking for a move down the inside possibly can he do it it's not gonna work oh and tobias crest goes for a very and that's a big crash that's a big crash and even further back i think we can see there that is a huge crash a very oh, very man. that's a very 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 big accident there Michael, without a front wing so that's that's gonna be and then Tobias Crest goes even further, maybe rebounding onto the track. He'll be hoping anything can happen there. But this is what I was talking about with that uh, with that car I was talking about earlier. I can't remember who it is, but there's even a battle for P1 here. This is what we love to see. The two reading game cars, Junior and Senior, going for the lead. And Max Carset seems to have him, but he goes for the... the but Victor goes for the switchback. But Max seems to have held it for now. But we'll see. Victor goes slightly wide there, I think, from what that perspective looked like. This is brilliant racing. <sighs> Heading into lap two. Wow. <coughs> that was such a... a, a bad mistake actually from from i don't know i thought it was maxi uh Crusette that made that move on the inside and just where am i but he's still at the front so i don't think it's him no so. from what i saw happened was i think tobias went for tried to basically do what charles leclerc did to hamilton at the weekend and it failed a bit and he ended up going wide and then onto the gravel and then when he came back onto the track the accident happened and i think there was an accident behind him that was just completely separate to it uh and that caused loads of cars but uh here we have jacob has gone for the move and he's got that done on victor but victor tries to come back at him to no avail has a little look down the inside has to bail slightly but not too much he'll still fancy his chances though for a podium in this race i, I think definitely now he has a small gap towards the the, the coverage car, the second coverage car, which is going great, side by side. With oh, and he goes, he tries to go, sorry for cutting you off there, but he tries to go around the outside outside for the lead, stealing it from Maxime Krauset, but he can't quite make the move stick. And Max Wolf just think now, all I have to do is build a gap. And there's someone gone wide. Tobias Crest has already been lapped. And that is... It wasn't going wide, I think that's just going out of the way because he's driving without a rear ring. Mm. And he, and I know Kopik and Max Reichel have both retired now. Uh, actually, I mean, 
Oh, it could be. Two people have got the same initials. We'll, we'll, we'll double Reiner. check. Calvin Reiner. Yeah. He, uh, crashed out of turn three. Oh, and Jacob goes down the inside. Max oh, no. maybe makes him run a bit wide. It squeezes him a bit, but... We'll have to see after the race. This is brilliant racing. Indeed. For the podiums. Questionable move, move in my opinion. Squeezing like that. Just in react as it seemed in reaction, so. I mean, I think we will all know what my opinion will be on this. <laughs> Without a shadow of a doubt, I will always stick up for my own driver. And Max goes to cover the inside there. And Jacob still tries to go slightly around the outside. Max gets some air time there. If floor damage was in the game, then I think he'd definitely be looking at floor damage there. And Victor will be thinking, as long as these two battle, and then maybe even P4 will be thinking, I can get in on the action if the top three battle. But Max will just be thinking, all I have to do is build a gap. I don't think uh, Kalbarczyk is going to allow him to let a gap. What, what Victor actually needed to do is, um, it's kind of dirty, but actually he needed to dive bomb Jacob when he had the opportunity. So that will create a gap for Maxime as a, they're basically almost on the same team, actually. Yeah, definitely. And Victor is right up Maxime's chuff here, <laughs> as they say. And he's got him. He has got him around the outside now. If I wasn't, if my heart wasn't bleeding on the inside, that would have been a very move to appreciate. But Maxime's got him back down the inside there. It's back. Oh, no, he hasn't. It... A little wiggle. A little wiggle on the, on the inside. So we lost a little bit of traction on the ex ex exit speed. Just a touch of oversteer can cause this much of a gap. And I think there's definitely should be looking at yellow flags there uh, as there's a car off the track. But uh, Max Seaton will still feel he's in a favourable position if uh, Jacob does manage or does make a mistake, which is very likely for someone in that position. It is very easy to make a mistake in this game, whether you get a touch of lag. And to be fair to Maxime, he has got the advantage that he is on the host system. So if there is any lag or anything of that sort, oh, but Victor's got him. That was a ballsy move. That was a ballsy move. Victor proving why he wants to be in the car that Maxime's in there. That was an amazing move. I didn't sp think I'd spend most of my first two races commentating, commentating on my own on my own drivers. But this is brilliant racing. Although maybe the two reading game cars, I suppose the reading game car and the Mazumda car, maybe they're maybe they're sort of tactic now would be don't battle and just do the do the old go-karting tactic of pushing on together and kind of because i don't know if they're in the voice call i know i did i know they do have the same team principle but i don't know if they go if they're in the same chat in the, if they're in the same call uh, by the looks of things i don't think so um <laughs> but yeah this has been amazing racing in the start phases of this race Maxime's off! He's off in turn two! Turn one, I mean. He cracked under the pressure. And that's a retirement, actually. In fact, that's a retirement from Maxime Krauset there. He's re Yeah. That's him retired and out of the race. He will be kicking himself. It just adds to the reading game woes of this, of today. And... With Ryan obviously crashing out of qualifying, both 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 metaphorically and literally, but Mazumda are clearly being the more consistent driver lineup out of the two reading game teams. So we'll have to see what happens at the end of this race. Maybe I'll end up uh, I'll end up eating my words, but I can only hope not. I, I would say a double podium finish is on the table because Riboli is looking at P3. I think if Riboli gets P3, 
He's not stupid. Oh, no! Oh, and that is horrible from Victor. He's just flipped it and... Oh, that's... That's meme-worthy. That was extremely disappointing from him. He just... On the pressure when there's no pressure. Yeah. He takes too much curb, and as we know, but either way, there's a good battle here. Massey doesn't seem to be able to do anything, but I think that might see him in P3. So, Victor's crash has actually benefits, benefited Ma Massey. And, of course, Victor isn't completely out of this race now. He is there, and he could potentially be looking at that, looking at a move on P4. But yeah, what an insane opening to this race. Of course, Jacob has used this to his advantage and has built a decent gap now. Yeah, the only one I think I can that can prevent him from winning this race is himself. And when it's going to be uh, uh, the question if can Gillet hold up, uh, stay in that second place, with arguably. I think I, uh, drivers I rate higher behind him with Hammond for uh, Kopic Grand Prix and Roboli for uh, Mazum, Mazumda. And the, the, the flip string going. Roboli goes to the outside. I don't think that's going to work this lap. Not here. Not here. But. I oh! Gillet! He's forced Gillet into a mistake. And Riboli will be counting his lucky stars there because that was really, really a gift to him. An early yeah. Christmas present. And with the amount of understeer that you get, doing the rest of this lap with no front wing is basically... A, it, it's, it's basically race over. Recovering from that would be bad, especially with the damages on R-Factor. Meanwhile, we have Peter Jones and Just Meisters are now in the chase for the for the podium spot because the rivals are just dropping it on the final lap. It's Kovic, it's um, Hammond. Is he going to look for P2 maybe? There's no way this is the final lap. Oh dear. Right. Jacob looks fairly comfortable. And Riboli, if I was going to ask anyone who's going to crack under pressure, it's not going to be Massey. Massey is very good at not cracking under pressure. But wow, what a race we have seen. I think we'll, ju I think we'll just ride on board with Jacob around the final corner. He has done what he needs to, and we said at the start of this race that he could be the dark horse for this, and he comes around the final corner to win the sprint race here. What a drive he has had today. Imagine if that car was white, oh god. <laughs> and then Massey comes home P2. That is a brilliant, brilliant finish for so everyone. I mean, so I mean black and white, sorry. That's... Hammond with, with uh, achieving a double po podium finish for Kopic Grand Prix. Well, uh, Kopic Motorsport, excuse me. Did I definitely <laughs> would not have expected Emmer Hammond to, be, to get to the podium at all, actually. Especially with Peter Jones, for instance, right behind him. And something must have happened to Meister because he is down in P8. Meanwhile, the top two do the donuts. Now, I know it's not technically, I know it's our junior team, but that is a very, very good finish from Massey and it's it's a great drive from Jacob everyone kind of does their cool down lap now and wow time for some interviews then we'll see who we can get into the channel for their interviews but yeah so that's the race
Okay, so we are just suddenly sort. We are kind of trying to sort out some interviews here. Uh, we'll be back as soon as we can uh, with uh, our first interview of the day. Okay, so I am joined here by Massey, of course, P2 from Azumda Motorsport. Now, firstly, that was a brilliant race. And of course, at one point, you were looking at a podium, potentially, for the feature race. But do you find that you're equally as happy with the podium, of course? The P2, the best finish um, for a reading game at, in the... Um, in the sprint race. Uh, first of all, hi Tom. Uh, yeah, I'm happy about uh, P2 in the second race. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more uh, in the first one and also in qualifying, but uh, I didn't have uh, any clean laps in qualifying. So to start uh, 11th, I think I was 11th. I don't, I don't, I don't even remember. But uh, yeah, to finish fifth, uh, it was already a good result, maybe less than uh, what I was expecting, but still uh, 10 points. Uh, yeah, second race was brilliant. I had uh, also a great uh, fight with uh, uh, Amer and Joe. Sadly, Joe spun later, but uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, of course you had quite I mean y it was looking like you were going to be P2 and P3 with your teammate of course Victor who was having a brilliant race until that little tussle with uh, Max Krauset which which kind of ruined both the course of both of their races of course with Victor later going and flipping the car or just cracking under the pressure of the car behind um, what advice would you I suppose give to him to just kind of recover from this and maybe be in the same position or maybe get the win next race i just think uh, he was unlucky i don't know what happened but also thinking about uh, race one i just think uh, he has been unlucky today so uh <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can get someone else for an interview uh enjoy yeah. the celebrations and well done. I'm, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure we'll be talking about this in the uh, team chat later <laughs> thank you <laughs> Hi. Hey. Yeah. Sure. Hi, one. Good. Hey.
so I am joined now by both 8-6 drivers, Max Reichel and Justin Meister. So uh, let's first start with Max. Uh, obviously, I imagine you're delighted with uh, a win in the feature race. Of course, like, you're the reigning world champion um, with 8-6. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. I uh, qualified P2. Uh, just very close uh, behind Peter and yeah, all the carnage happened behind me basically and I basically yeah had an open road, didn't do any mistakes, any major mistakes at least, and yeah, was pretty happy. Uh, and Justin, do you think that maybe if the if it had gone a bit better for you today, do you think maybe you'd be able to sort of help your teammate? Um, and be be on the podium with him, or do you think that maybe it just wasn't your day today? Well, I mean, I recovered to P two in race one, like I didn't even know I could do it, but I managed to do it. I don't know how. Yeah, because of the crash, I had a little bit damage, but then got lucky that some people had also some collisions and spun and everything, so I managed to get up the order again. Yeah, I think I could have fought for the win with Max and Peter if he wouldn't have spun so it would have been really close but I'm happy I, I do apologise for, for forgetting that you had that incredible recovery drive it was really impressive to watch uh, just looking down and realising that you did end up in P2 somehow um, uh, how do you think kind of a question for both of you how do you think that the reverse grid is kind of affecting the just a general race day and of course with the later finish times and uh and stuff like that uh do you think that maybe it's going to hinder your fight for the championship with potentially lower race results or do you think that maybe it's going to give teams that aren't so likely to fight for the championship that chance to win the championship potentially just on points from the uh points from the sprint race so yeah should I stop, Justin? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Uh, yeah, obviously for us, it's hindering us, obviously, but that, that's what it's supposed to do, the reverse grid. Uh, it's there to give the lower teams a better chance to fight for wins and give us a bit of a harder challenge. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, yeah, it's hindering us, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just as Max said, it's like better for the... I will, say, I will just now say slower teams to get more points in the second race and harder for us to be to get more. Yeah, I think it's fair, but it can cause a lot of coverage. Yeah. And that's like the only downside, I think. Yeah, like opinion. when you have slower people in the front and faster in the back, there and in uh, lap one and lap two, obviously everyone is together. And especially on Grand Sech, I, I think crashes are yeah, can happen very fast, especially in sector two, when people misjudge uh, the, the turning or the braking or it's like we saw today in race one and race two. But yeah, um, shouldn't be too bad. Uh... All right, brilliant. Thanks for the time and uh, best of luck for the rest of the championship. Hopefully we'll be speaking to you again soon. Uh, maybe when we speak to you, at the end of the season, maybe you'll be as world champions. Um, <laughs> thanks for the uh, thank. Thank you. Yeah, no problem.
It's all right. All right, so I'm joined by one squire now, and um, I imagine he's not the happiest uh, after his team's performance there, but uh, he, he he has something to say, so uh, what, what would you like to say, Bob? Well, I'm just going to say a few uh, comments, basically. Um, Jurors actually did well, considering um, what uh, his, his ability, so I mean, he did well. But I wasn't really willing to let Juris go out there on his own. So, and with most of the team just really not, not feeling it, uh, Aaron filled in at the last minute, and we just felt that he could try and perform well as he's done in other series. But it wasn't to be. But I'm just. But it's it's just like I don't know if it's like first race nerves or just I'm not too sure, but. I can assure you, this will not run for the rest of the season. And we've got a home race coming up. It's we need to perform well. I mean, always in the first race of the last three seasons, we've always got points on the board, regardless of if it's, if it's one driver or two drivers. We've always got points on the board. Today was just I I really don't know because we got because we got the talent, we got we got personnel, but. It's just needing to put that more effort in, needing to more care about the, about the racing. But today, it's just not on. So, by by the time we reach Wales next week, we, we, we next weekend, it needs to change. It def, desperately needs to change, and and I will be talking with my drivers throughout the week and, uh, uh, and think about how to improve it and to try a different system out because this. I'm just trying to fit, I'm just trying to get it right, as we have done for the last few seasons when we had Jakob on board. I mean, Jakob won the uh, second race today. Uh, it's not sour grapes, but congratulations to you, Jakob. And just, uh, I, I, um, I, 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 I don't know. To be honest, I really, I really don't know. I just, it's, it's, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. All right. Thank you for your time. Uh, good luck for the rest of the season. And, uh, yeah, I suppose yeah, if, there's, if, uh, if there is any luck. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see you on the commentary team hopefully next week then. Yeah. All right. So, Amma Hammond is up next. We seem to have, like, a big list of people who, uh, <laughs> who are wanting an interview. Yeah. So, this could go on for a bit longer than we think. So, uh, we're going to have to keep it brief. But um, firstly, very, very action-packed race. Uh, tell us, from your perspective, what happened in the race. From my perspective, uh, first race was uh, quite chaotic at the first three laps. Uh, a lot of good cars had damage at uh, the start. Jakob, I saw him, had multiple accidents, which none of them were at fault. I was involved in the accident myself. But after after roughly five, six laps into the race, then uh, it all cooled down. Uh, in my perspective, I had a good battle with Will uh, Metcalf for ninth at the time and race one midway through. And then uh, after the pit stops, we had good pace. Some people had to pit a couple of times uh, more. I think we both had to pit one more time. And we sort of locked ourselves to fourth place at the first one. Uh, race 2 was, I guess, more chaotic since it was a sprint race and everyone had to go for it. Multiple cars had uh, accidents in front of me. I unfortunately had to... I had an accident with an uh, Iris car at the start of midway through race 2. But um, I had a good battle in race 2 with uh, Rivioli and uh, one, of the, one of the other cars. I forgot it's team but yeah overall it was a bit chaotic at the start but once everything settled it was really calm uh yeah right best of luck for the rest of the season thank you for your time uh no it's a pleasure it's... okay we're joined by aaron curtis next so uh obviously this is is this your second 
third or fourth season of Fouts now? Have you been here since the start or... And because I know you were definitely in it last season, probably the season before, um, do you think it was it was that this season's cars compare to last season's? And in, in what way, I suppose, do they compare? Alright then, so it appears that Aaron Curtis wasn't interested in an interview. Uh, I mean, my question was kind of stupid. I, I'm running out. I wasn't expecting to ask this many questions, so. Uh, the stream's been a ve very popular. Sorry, oh, oh he's back. back. Oh, you're back. back. Sorry. Yeah. So, uh, I, I suppose just ignore my stupid question. Um, what's, <laughs> what, what's the race from your, your perspective? Um, would you say well... it went well for you, or? I wouldn't say the sprint, no, not the sprint race, the feature race didn't go well for me. Let's just say that, for sure. I mean, at one point, I rolled the car. Like, I don't know how I managed to do that, but I did. I'm so shocked at that. And then this, then the sprint race, I, I kind of did improve my driving style, but I really do feel like for the next race, which is a team's home race, I could do way better. That's all i got to say about that. About that. Thank you for your time. Uh, best of uh, luck for the rest of the season. Uh, I've just cut him off. <laughs> that was brutal. Right, Tobias Crest is up next, and then it's Ryan Masmuda. So... Hello, hello, Tobias. You are alive. Hi. So, uh, obviously, uh, feature race. No, oh, yeah, feature race didn't go too well for you with the retirement. I do believe was it you who retired? Because you seem to retire and then not retire. Whether that was a glitch or not, I, I don't know. I didn't retire. Retired in the second race, not in the first race. Oh yeah, of course. Was it? I think you were on pole for the second race, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So uh you're so you're looking down the grid. What's your thinking for I'm going into turn one and I need to keep it clean? What what was your kind of strategy? Yeah, come come away good. So you don't in the pack directly, so you're um far away from them. Um what happened, what was quite good, amazing. It was good, good start, um Yeah. And then just driving. Brilliant. I'm really sorry I couldn't ask you any more questions, but we've got a huge, long list uh, of people uh, waiting to uh, be asked. So uh, thank you for the time and enjoy the rest yeah. of the season. Yeah. So Ryan Masmuda is next. Hello, Ryan. Now, uh, uh, you are alive. Uh, I imagine you're very bitterly disappointed at that uh, at that qualifying, but also in a weird way, extremely, um, uh, probably elated <laughs> as I am with Massey's podium. Uh, so a very bittersweet marmite kind of evening for you. Uh, what's your take on it? Well, my crash was kind of hefty, so I couldn't because yeah. Me being really happy seeing Massey in P2 in my team, slash your team, that was kind of cool. So I'm very happy about that, that I kind of forgot about me crashing. Are you, uh, are, are you saving the uh, skill for OFR tomorrow, getting up especially early for, uh, for the race? Hopefully I wake up early, because usually I sleep in for OFR. Wait, I thought there is no all far tomorrow, is there? Oh no, there isn't. <laughs> anyway, sorry again for cutting it short, but we have got like three people waiting. So, uh, enjoy the rest of your your day, afternoon, evening, uh, and just celebrate the fact that 
uh, you, your team has got a podium. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. So we are live now with the owner of the league, Max. Um, yes, hello. Hello. So not only was it not the best um, yeah. <laughs> second race for you, uh, with a, a tussle up with kind of your teammate, but not really. It, it's complicated. Uh, a bit of a ghastly Albon situation uh, at Hockenheim there. Um, so uh, a couple of questions. First, I wanted to ask, do you think this season's going to be harder for you to run as a league admin in terms of you've got the reverse grids and like, you know, it, the league's getting significantly bigger with every season. Has it? Comp how does it compare to when you were quite well smaller at the start of the season? Of course, we had the DTM incident. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how how does it compare? Well, uh, it it showed that it's going to be more complicated this season because we're back to the old uh, season one and season two season two format, but we also have more people. And this season, I'm pretty much completely alone. I mean, there is Jean. John said something, but uh, I'm not really, uh, he's not really doing much because I don't think he really is interested in doing much. So yeah, I'm pretty much alone right now. And yeah, because we are more, we are back on a more com complex uh, system uh, for, it's going to be more complicated. Yes. Hopefully, hopefully we will do well though. <laughs> so of course, uh, a tussle up with uh, the Mazumda, apparently I was pronouncing it wrong all this time. So a tussle up with um, Victor. Now, uh, I mean, the stream's accidentally seen <laughs> your conversation after the race, but uh, tension's running quite high between you two. Do you think it will almost like heal for the next race or? Uh, you mean between me and Ryan? Uh, no, between you and uh, Victor in the oh, Mazumda after the uh, incident earlier in the race. Uh, a very uh, ballsy move from Victor. Before he well, yeah, it. when he overtook me in the inside, uh, it was really a shock to me because I did not expect it. Uh, it I did not expect him to do that. But uh, apart from that, uh, yeah, no, I don't really have any problems with him. It's just that the shock, <laughs> the shock me uh, this move. But yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have any other problems with him. Brilliant. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of the season. No problem. So we're with Peter Jones next, and I do appreciate that I have just completely <laughs> destroyed <laughs> Alex Hallows. Uh, he was next in line, so we'll have to apologise to him after that. But, uh, nice, yeah. I'm not sure he noticed he was on mute, to be fair, but uh, we'll, no. see, we'll see how he takes it when he actually gets into the box. Yeah. So, uh, Peter, good race today. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't actually seen the full grid classification yet, but uh, what, what's your take on the race? Could you repeat the question? Sorry, you kind of cut out a bit. Sorry. Um, what's your take on the on the race today? W was it good? Was it bad? Or what do you think? Um, I think race one, um, race one annoyed me because um, obviously you saw I started I started on pole, which I was actually amazed by because I got into I got into quali having done about twenty laps of practice and during practice i was about i don't know half a second off and then i came into quali and i and i got pole by four hundredths of a second which was quite amazing for me but uh yes yeah, so i started pole and then uh lap two going into um i never remember what corner that is but i just dipped a wheel on the outside and spun inwards and uh obviously it was lap two, so everyone was bunched up, and I couldn't reverse onto the track because I would hit somebody. So had to wait until everyone went past, and then um, just kind of worked my way up from there. I think I finished sixth or seventh, or I can't remember around there. <laughs> but uh, race one, race one was kind of annoying, so I tried to forget about that one. Well, obviously, velocity. I said in the streamer. Probably more of the dark horses of the team's championship this year. I'm sure you will probably get a race win this season. You look to be one of the more uh, capable drivers. 
for this year. So uh, best of luck for the rest of the season. And uh, hopefully Thank we'll be speaking much. to you as the winner next race. Yeah, I really, really hope so. <laughs> I was I was here for half of last season and I was so close all the time but never actually got it. So hopefully, hopefully this year will be my year, eh? Yeah, hopefully so. All right, thanks for your time. No problem. So, Alex Hallows next. Hello, Alex. Oh, hello, hello. So, uh, good race today. What's uh, what's uh, your take on it? Uh, for Invictus, it's it was pretty rough, uh, especially seen from the sidelines. Uh, both drivers did do well though in qualifying. Uh, if I'm correct, I think Calvin did. I think P9, if I'm correct, or P7, and uh, Joe doing uh, P11 just underneath the points, but. Um, and that I I expect from them. It's really good. Um, the problem is, I think if I was correct, I heard that Calvin went too straight into the barriers. If I'm correct. Uh, yeah, I think there was an incident down in the hill kind of section where he just went into the barrier and uh, lost a couple of positions. Ah, uh, right. That's that's because uh, I think I think for that that was quite unfortunate. He said to me it was it was kind of the car the car wasn't really good on the brand hatch itself it was pretty rough and everything around some places but um, overall in my honest opinion the race was great had lots of frills and spills and lots of action right brilliant thank you for your time and uh, with that that does actually conclude the stream for today so we will be back next week with the circuit of wales of course nrwo's home race let's see if they're gonna uh, replicate this race which wasn't so good or if they are going to actually like you know win a race which uh, would be very good for them in their home race but uh, we'd like to thank you all very much for watching the stream uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, to run it and commentate on it and uh, let's hope that wales can bring the same thrills as this race thanks for watching uh please like and subscribe to the vows channel uh, i have to do this bit um i see the stream's got three likes uh so yeah so thanks everyone for watching and the support on the stream it's been brilliant uh and we'll see you next time